everybody. We welcome to another episode of the uh, Mike and Bradley Sports Scene here on uh, Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative Channel 18. Of course, uh, we uh, we are grateful that you have joined us for another broadcast. And tonight we're going to talk about a number of subjects, in including football, baseball, and some basketball, and maybe some other subjects of interest to you. But first, we're going to off. We're going to start off here as I have Bradley Hargis with me. He's back after 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 a, after an a absence, and uh, of course, Albert Roberts filled in for him in that time. We thank Albert Roberts for that, uh, for being a guest host on such short notice uh, again. And uh, can, of course, we are here tonight to, to discuss the uh, football season. We're going to start off with high school football, of course. It's the finale of the regular season in the state of Tennessee two weeks ago in Georgia. Alabama is also coming to a, to a close in the state of Alabama for high school football. But we are concerned with Bledsoe County. 7-2 overall and 3-1 and in the uh, Region 2-2A. And, of course, last week they, uh, they went to... Um, Middle Tennessee and defeated the Tigers of Gordonsville there at 21 to 14 in a game that really was down to the very last play, Bradley. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I mean, Bledsoe County went up there to Gordonsville and just the first couple quarters, I mean, it just seemed like it was going to be all Bledsoe County. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, the third quarter, they came out and scored once on the first possession and onside kick and score again. So, you know, to even it up, and we we're kind of like on our heels, couldn't get anything going offensively or defensively. But luckily, we found our groove, started running the football a lot better, and, and the defense started performing like the way they were in the first quarter and even and in part of the second quarter. So, come out of Gordonsville with a victory, and that's, that's pretty good. Gordonsville is a good team, and that's definitely going to be a huge for our momentum going into this game this week against Oneida. Well, of course, the uh, key, the uh, probably the most memorable drive of that game was uh, was what in the on the opening drive where Bledsoe County got backed up at its five on the opening kickoff, then got hit with a penalty, which pushed it back to the two and a half yard line, and then drove it 97 and a half yards the lines to score. Now that that indicated Bledsoe was able to overcome penalties, which they did several times in that game, and uh, managed to come away with the 21-14 victory. But it really was close as uh, as a pass completion by Gordonsville. And it wound up short of the uh, fourth first down marker, and of course Bledsoe County held on to a 21-14 lead, lead. Okay, now what what's going to happen here is is that Friday night Bledsoe's in the playoffs. That's just that's not in doubt. It's just where they will finish in the league. Right now they are uh, tied for second with Oneida, which will be the team that'll be coming down here Friday night in the finale. And of course both teams are seven and two, hoping to get get a win here tonight. If if either team wins, they are second. The loser will be third, will be on the road. Now, Bledsoe County wants to be the winner. They want to finish second because what it is, is they're going to have, they're going to, have to play one of the teams out of Region 1-1A, and I believe what are the teams that we have out, out there? Out of, out of Region 1-2A, I mean, it's we have Hampton, Happy Valley, South Green, Eagleton, um, West Green is even in the mix based on certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. So, teams that are a pretty good ways away. We're talking the upper east or east corner of Tennessee, um, above Knoxville and Jay in the uh, Johnson City, Morristown area. So it would be definitely a, a quite a large uh, travel habit for at us. At least three to four hours. At, at, at least, uh, at least three. But uh, we're we're hoping that we can host. I, I, we just gotta take we gotta take care of business Friday night mm -hmm. against Onada, and if we do that. We don't have to worry about that. Uh -huh. I mean, the ideal scenario is, you know, we win Friday night, secure a second place, play at home the following week, which will play a lower seed, and hope that the lower seed beats or wins the other game they're going to be playing that Friday night so that we'll host again. But we'll see York again in about in the third round if if we get that if far. we get that far we'll see york again well we hope that the magic helmet here will will ensure the victory well, for sure. friday yeah. night and of course it's senior night and this will be the second senior class that has winning seasons in all four of its years that's the first one was last year's senior class and uh and really to be honest right now they're also going to have friday night they're going to honor the 1962 the 1972 and the 1983 Squatchy Valley Conference champions. And uh, John Boyden, of course, was a player on the 62 team. He was the head coach on the 72 team. Uh, T.A. Smith was one of the players on the 72 team that finished second in the state. 
behind Sweetwater, the eventual state champion. That was the first time Bledsoe had been in the TWSAA play because at that time only one team went to the playoffs in that in that year. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we urge the fans to be there Friday night. We want them to show up in force to, uh, to give the Oneida Indians a bit of a trick and give and the Warriors will give the fans a treat. Well, Friday night, I mean, the, the region two that we're in, mm -hmm. Really, the Bledsoe and Oneida game will decide. I mean, the the standing. So we know York is one, mm -hmm. and we we know Polk is four. Right. So Bledsoe wins their second. Oneida wins their second. Right. Um, the the scenario in in Region One is an absolute mess because Happy Valley, um, or, I'm sorry, Hampton is the leader right now, four zero right. in the region. But right. they play South Green. I'm sorry, West Green this Friday night. So if this scenario, here's the scenario. If Happy Valley wins, I'm sorry, if Hampton wins and Cunningham Gap wins and Happy Valley wins, then Hampton is first, Happy Valley second, South Green third, Eagleton fourth. If Hampton wins, Cumberland Gap wins, West Green wins, which I don't know how they can do that at the same time that Hampton does because they play West Green. Uh -huh. Um, it'll be Hampton first, Happy Valley second, South Green third, West Green fourth. So West Green has to win to make it in. That's the only scenario they've got. Um, it is possible that South Green could get the first place bid. So should South Green win, uh -huh. Cumberland Gap win, and Happy Valley wins. So one, two, and three, we're either going to be playing. If, if we are the second number two seed, we'll be playing either South Green. Or Happy Valley, Happy Valley. Um, based on what I can see here, one of those two teams will be coming to Bledsoe County, and in the next round, obviously it'll be um, if the lower seed wins, wins, it would be Eagleton West Green, um, well Eagle, Eagleton or West Green, uh -huh. and we would still host. We still uh, host the second. first two rounds, yeah. Then that third round would be a, uh, probably a rematch with York. Probably, likely a rematch with York. Saying that you know the th the right teams win in yeah. uh, and, and Region Two, the good good the good news is I mean even though the Region Two and, and Region One not taking anything at all away from uh -huh. from Happy Valley or, or Hampton or anybody like that or South Green because they're they're good ball teams don't get me wrong, uh -huh. but the it seems like when you start in the eastern part of the state, the further west you go, the harder the competition gets. Right, and uh, it's. Again, nothing. Not sliding them. They're yeah. good ball teams. That they're, you know, they're seven and two, eight and one, six and three, which are respectful records. You know, of course, Bledsoe's seven and two, and Ida's seven and two, and York is undefeated right now, uh, still at nine and zero. Oh. But we have a little easier road as far as the playoffs are concerned right. by playing Region One, and I hope that statistic-wise, I hope that we are able to. To go a little further in in the playoffs because of the competition level. Yeah, of course it means it basically means that Bledsoe County would hopefully have a shot at York in the third round. They've never been to the third round of the playoffs, by the way. Uh, of course, the Bledsoe County, of course, seven and two. They start out two and two, but since then they have gone on a five-game win streak. Their defense uh, has kept has really asserted itself as of late. And Bledsoe County's defense is basically, if, yeah, forced turnovers. And the defense, man, it's playing outstanding. I mean, I've watched, you know, Bledsoe play for a long time, mm -hmm. and I mean, they're the defense they have right now. They're quick off the end. You know, uh, Zach Brugner is a force on yeah. the end. I mean, he had what, like two, three sacks last week. Yeah. Um, was in on other others. I mean, it was ridiculous, and I can remember. When uh, in start of the well, it's second quarter last week, uh -huh. that quarterback from Gordonsville was scared to death because they they were when he got the snap, yeah. he looked up to throw the ball and there was four white shirts coming at him, mm -hmm. one of which was Zach Brogner, yeah. and I never seen somebody, you know, not get set to throw or not. Most of the time, you just either you know just go down, you know. But he was, I mean, bouncing around on his feet, had no clue what to do, yeah. scared to death. And just threw the ball away. Uh, well, you know they had they had injuries to their many of their players, and he more or less was probably thrown in there because yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they, they, were, they were riddled with injuries. He he didn't have the seasoning to uh, to 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 make it. 
uh, to really uh, get in there. Now, Gordonsville was a good team. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Gordonsville wanted to play us. So that's how, that's what I was told by, by Coach uh, Tabor. Gar Gordonsville called us up and said, hey, look, we've got the same open dates. Let's get a game to the other, and that that and that was it. And that was a good game. And to be honest with you, that was it was a it was a it's a fairly good field. That wasn't a bad field. Well, you hardly no. ever hear of Gordonsville unless you her South follow, Pittsburgh South unless you follow the one A playoffs because mm -hmm. South Pittsburgh usually meets mm -hmm. them in the semifinals or in the state championship uh -huh. every year. So they are they've won the state championship three times. Um, They've been state runner-up several times. Uh -huh. They are a good ball team. So yeah. going into the game, again, that's what I said about momentum. Beating a team like Gordonsville and going into a game with Oneida this week it was is, is huge as far as motivation and, and momentum. Of course, Oneida, have, they have the same record we do. We're both 7-2 mm -hmm. right yeah, now. Yeah, right. So you go back and look at the, the common opponents specifically just in our region. And... Uh, they, they lost the, to York. The, the only the, they they we both lost to York. Right. Um, we lost to York 27-17. Right. Oneida lost twenty eight to nothing. Um, now Oneida did uh, a number on Teleco in Polk County and Wartburg. Um, Blesso also won against mutual opponents. So it's it's going to be interesting because if you look at the spread of points, Blesso has more in those victories than what Oneida does. Absolutely. So, you know, we, we were plus 29 over Polk County. We were plus 35 over Teleco, plus 22 over over Wartburg. And uh, Oneida was plus 4 over Polk, plus 15 over Teleco, and plus 15 over Wartburg. So, but, but again, Oneida coming in to our home stadium, having a home field advantage is going to be huge. Uh-huh. But... And with them, with them having a three-hour drive themselves, that's going to be huge for us. Yeah, but that, we've never beaten Oneida. No, not in four tries. Uh, you know, it, and three of those wins were by were very close games. Uh, you know, it, but you know, but you know, the thing about it is with you know, Oneida, of course, um, they're, they they were Tennessee Orange, which which should have, uh, uh, which you know. Which, as you know, was because because they asked for Tennessee uniforms in the 1950s, and that's what they got. And so they've been wearing Tennessee art since uh, uh, then. And uh, of course, they're going up against the blue. And of course, there's another set of Tennessee orange about to play another set of blue, which is the Vols versus the Wildcats. So obviously, that should be you'll get a double dose of that this weekend. But we'll go into that a little later, of course. But uh, but you know, let's be you, you know you know let's be honest. Blazos probably got. Probably a good good enough team that can be all night. I'm you know I'm mm -hmm. I'm confident that this it could very very well happen, and so says the Magic Helmet. And hopefully, well, you have. I mean, the first time we played all night, I believe, was my junior year, mm -hmm. and we lost um, at home seven six. seven to six. That seven was the first six. game I did. That was the first and game then I did. We went to Oneida the following year, twenty one twenty, and twenty one twenty lost by one point, mm -hmm. and then didn't play them. Till 2017, 2018, yeah. where they beat us 14 to six, I believe. No, 14 to nothing. And then in, in 2018, they beat us 10 to nothing. That was close. So that close games, and uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I really believe it will. So you, you know, that, that's the main thing is getting out there and supporting the Warriors this Friday night. Um, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Uh, absolutely, and of course, uh, the United game in 99 was the first game I did, and I'll tell you something right now. I've screwed up in every which way on doing that broadcast, because really, to be honest, it was a learning experience for me, and I said, okay, well, that's it for me. You know, I'm not going to do another game and shit, shit. And she well, said, do it next week and all that. And I well, is it not quickly. great? Is it not comforting to know that not one thing has changed? Well, the thing about it is, is that you weren't in the press box, so therefore, it can't, couldn't gotten any worse, and and your your your, your buddy Dickie Brown wasn't too wasn't too thrilled about having somebody doing the radio, but of course I got him to come around to my way of thinking, you know. Oh yeah. That sort of thing. And all that. And uh, of course, um, you know, but really to be honest with you right now, Oneida probably has maybe just a little less talent than Bledsoe County has. And if Bledsoe County can go down there and, and put it to them, same way they did against, uh, uh, did last week. I think that, you know, and put the touchdowns there and get a big enough margin. Just hold on, they can get the win. Yeah, Blesco controls their own destiny. 
in, in, in this in this scenario here. Mm-hmm. If they do what they're supposed to do, in all likelihood, if Blessel County goes in and plays a game like they played against Polk, Whitwell, and, and last week, mm-hmm. of, of the, just answering those two scores at, with a team like Gordonsville, if they can just go down there and do what they're supposed to do, and not turn the ball over, not make many mistakes, Bledsoe should win the ball game. They should. And the same thing applies to Oneida. If Oneida comes in, they play a stellar game and they don't make any mistakes and Bledsoe coughs the ball up and you know and, and turns the ball over, then Oneida might win. You know, they, Oneida could possibly win. So it's, it's one of those games that you have, you know, basically two, two middle heavyweights coming together, same height, same weight, same reach and and they're going to slug it out for four quarters and see what happens this could be a very low scoring game it, it possibly could, could, be. could be yeah the last two games we played like i said was 14 to nothing 10 to nothing i mean so separated by just you know two scores mm-hmm. so it it could be a you know a, a, a 13 to a 13 to 7 or right. or well, even a 10 to 7 or yeah. 14 to mm-hmm. 7 i mean it could be a very low scoring affair because i believe their strengths for Bledsoe has are the same strengths that Oneida has, and, and both weaknesses match up, much like, I mean, it just almost mirror images of each other. Yeah, well, of course, um, Coach Tabor will no doubt. I mean, he's turned things around. He's mm-hmm. turned things around. You know, you got you had five straight winning seasons. That's something that's never happened in Bledsoe County before, and they have a, you know, have a. Uh, have, have a team that uh, basically is a team team and that sort of thing so it really be it is so we encourage you now if you are a football player on the 62 72 and 83 teams and you haven't gotten the word about Friday night's game they want you to show up so they can honor you at just before just before the game I believe and uh, of course uh, those are those are Squatchy Valley Conference teams when the old Squatch Valley Conference was in the Bledsoe, of course, won in 61, 62, 72, and 83. That was five conference titles in there in that span. And again, the coaches, the players, and most teams are we we ask we ask that you be there to be honored, so that you be honored properly, and uh, you know that sort of thing. And we also have senior night. Of course, the seniors are going to be saying goodbye to the to the to the fans, and these seniors, of course. Very young men started out, bought into the program, knew what it's like to win, and then uh, they want to go out and they want to give the fans that victory and get into the into the home round of the playoffs here. Okay, well we're we, we're going to go to a break, and then when we come back, we will have college football, and then we'll discuss a little college football, including last week's Tennessee. Alabama game, which proves the fact that there is two halves in a football mm-hmm. contest. As you're watching the. Mike and Bradley, Sports Scene, on Bledsoe Telephone 18. You need a bank that you can depend on. Here at Citizens Tri-County Bank, we have the most dependable staff that you will ever meet. Call in, you will not get an automated attendant, you'll get a person. But on the other side, we have all the technology that anyone would need from apps to online banking to bill pay. So please come and grow with us as we're about to celebrate our 50th year we are the only community bank you will ever need. Come and see the beautiful Sequatchie Valley. While you're here, visit the Dunlap Mercantile. We have a full line of hats from Resistall, Stetson, Charlie One Horse, American Hat Makers, GG Pip, Greeley Hats from the TV show Yellowstone, and a full line of vintage hats. Make sure to check out our hat bar where we can clean, shape, and customize a hat just for you. Right here at the Dunlap Mercantile.
At Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter, we're committed to be better. Better prices, better vehicles, a better experience. Your Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter understands that you rely on us to provide you with the highest quality of used vehicles. With over 350 pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. So what are you waiting for? Let us show you a better experience with the Jason Lewis Automotive family. Come visit us at Rankin Avenue here in Dunlap or on the web at DunlapSuperCenter.com. Okay, everybody, we are back, and of course, uh, our second segment is uh, college football. Of course, uh, the last weekend has been very colorful as concerned. Of course, uh, the big one in the SEC and in the Tennis state of Tennessee was Tennessee, Alabama, mm. and which I said proves that there are actually two D two halves in every football game. The first half was all Tennessee, twenty to seven halftime lead, and Tennessee fans may be starting to think, maybe, well, maybe we finally got uh, Saban's number for the second straight year. But unfortunately, in the second half, Alabama did some adjustments in a sort of the Bear Bryant-like fashion, and came back and scored 27 points on the Volunteers, shut the uh, shut the Volunteers down, and won 34 to 20. Now, what that meant for the Volunteers, they dropped all the way from 15th down to 20th in one poll, 17th to 21st in another poll, while Alabama dr jumps up to the top 10 for the uh, for the week. Of course, uh, Georgia is off this week. Georgia was off last week. They'll play Florida this week in their annual outdoor. Uh, cocktail, uh, out largest outdoor cocktail rivalry. They still playing that in Jacksonville. They still play that at Jacksonville. Uh, they did talk about moving it permanently to home and home, but decided to leave it at Jacksonville. And of course, let's talk about nicknames here for a second. We know very, the various rivalries. You know, third Saturday in October is Alabama, Tennessee, Tennessee. Alabama. the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Is Georgia, Georgia. Georgia. Of course, they they ask you not to officially use that anymore. Right. Battle for the beer barrel. Tennessee, Kentucky. Right. They used to have the beer barrel until there was a tra there was an accident involving drunk driving and several Kentucky players got hurt or killed, so they they discontinued the beer barrel portion of it. Battle for the bluegrass state. Kentucky, Louisville. Right. The mayor's the mayor's cup. Hmm. South Carolina, Missouri, because they're both located in a city called Columbia. So it's the mayor's uh, cup. Okay. Okay. Clean old fashioned hate. That's Georgia Tech, Georgia. Right. Hatred in the Hills or the I 40 robbery? Hatred in the Hills, I 40 robbery. Mm hmm. Tennessee Vanderbilt. That's though it's not official. It's not. It's not an official name. It's just some people use that. Well, no wonder I didn't know it. It's not official. It's not. Well, that's what they. Some people call it. Uh, you're making this up. Uh, I forty rivalry. You know, because this is an I. It's long I forty. Nashville Knoxville's long I forty. And hatred in the hills is basically because it's 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 in the hills. They should have some sort of trophy. The Egg Bowl. Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Right. Red River rivalry. Texas, Oklahoma. Right. Battle of Texas. Texas and Baylor. Texas and Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Yeah. Oh. They'll have they'll they'll be start playing that next year again. The Bedlam series. That Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Right. Oklahoma. See, that's that you have all these rivalries coming down. To Hatfield McCoy feud. Oh dear, that's got to be a West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pitt. yeah. Pitt. That's that's of course that's because that really is that you get those names and anything. As a matter of fact, the the uh, third Saturday in October was not used until 1939 when Tennessee defeated Alabama 21 nothing. That because that back then it didn't have an official name until some. Sports writers signed because it was played on the third Saturday in October. Yeah. So they called it the third Saturday in October. Second Saturday in September. Tennessee, Florida. Is it always the second Saturday? A second or third Saturday in, in September. That's huh. when they always played. The old South's oldest football rivalry. Hmm. Auburn, Alabama. Auburn, Georgia. Auburn, Georgia. The Iron Bowl. Auburn, Alabama. How did he get the, How did that get that nickname? No idea. 
Birmingham was known as the Pittsburgh of the South. They had all the steel mills. Ain't no ham like Birmingham. <laughs> that's right. Or ham like Birmingham. Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, and uh, what it was is that Birmingham had all those all those iron factories, steel steel mills. Mm. So it got nicknamed the Iron Bowl. And supposedly, what happened was that they when they restarted up in 1947, 1948, excuse me, they both uh, representatives from both schools buried a hatchet in a park. So it's a sort of symbolic burying hatchet. And by the way, if you watch Forrest Gump, the uh, pit, the, the, the the bench he sits on at the beginning of the film, the the uh, hatchet is not far away. They don't know exactly where it's buried at, but it says it's not far away from where he was sitting. That's well, I hate to break this to you, you but had, the bench that he was sitting in, they mm -hmm. filmed this that in Savannah, Georgia. That was not in Alabama. Well, like what they said, it was like not far <laughs> away from, from that. You know, like some only, only, only a state, a state and a half away. Yeah, well, only a state and a half away. And that's, you know, that sort of thing. The Big Thursday. This is another rivalry. The Big Thursday. South Carolina Clemson. Oh. They used to call it the Big Thursday because they would play it on the Thursday Thanksgiving. So they called it the Big Thursday. Hmm. And that was a that was about time when they would have the state fair, so that's when they would play it. Play play each other. Now, let's talk a little about uh, Clemson. Clemson apparently is uh, doing some fact finding or something about leaving the ACC. Everyone now. They, they, they want out. Florida State wants out. Florida State, and, and they want out. And the reason the reason for this is they were all gung-ho about staying in the ACC mm -hmm. until NC State changed their vote. NC State changed their vote at the last minute, mm -hmm. allowing Cal and Stanford to join the ACC. Mm -hmm. A West Coast team joined the Atlantic Coast Conference. Mm -hmm. And Florida State, Clemson, uh, I mean, they all just went nuts. Clemson plays NC State this yeah. weekend, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a uh, that'll be an interesting game there, and it's, yeah. and it's at NC State. Right. So, but uh, yeah, Florida State wants out. Clemson wants out. Now the big the big question is: Is will Clemson make a bid for the SEC, or will Clemson go the easier route and go for the Big Ten? Um, that those are the two things that I've talked about, heard, yeah. heard people talk about. And I've even heard somebody mention that Clemson may 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 try to get in the Big Twelve, but I just don't I don't see that happening. But uh, Florida State, I think Florida State would we'll go to the will SEC. definitely make a bid for the SEC. SEC. I think is that Florida State probably is. You know, Florida initially opposed Florida State when they approached them in the 1990s about joining the conference so they could have mm -hmm. the, the championship game. They said we have enough rivals because they were playing Miami. Miami. Apparently showing some interest in the SEC, but I don't think they're going to get into the SEC. Because well, if Florida State comes in, another team will have to come in and make it right. even. And so it depends on who they will extend the invite to or who will want to come out. Well, you would have to go east and you would have to go west. Yeah. You, you really wouldn't want to, you would have like, or maybe north, like Duke or North Carolina. Well, Duke, North Carolina would make sense. Clemson would make sense. Mm -hmm. Florida State would make sense. Even... As bad as I'd hate to, even Miami would make sense because mm -hmm. it is southeast. You know, of course, then you have UCF, the smaller schools. Right. Um, but then you have also in Oklahoma, if with Oklahoma coming over, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State is sitting right there on, you know, right there with them. So, you know, if you got one from east and one from west to keep them even. What, then, what about Memphis? Memphis. Well, there's Memphis. There's Tulane. There's oh, Tulane's a former SEC member. Yeah. Right. And there's uh, Georgia Tech. Louisville. And Georgia Tech, could, Georgia come back, Tech. could come back in. Yeah, that would be we because really is that the thing about it is you of course all, all the most of the SEC schools have rivalries in two schools in each state except Kentucky. Well, you still got four big schools in Texas. You've still got SMU. You've still got Baylor. You've still got T TCU, and you still got Texas Tech. Well, SMU is going to the ACC. Okay, so well, that's knock that, them out. Then. That. Okay, what, let's look at it this way: is that Texas Tech too far out? That's where they're sort of really too far. Mm -hmm. Too small, really. You you look at Texas Well, you remember Christian. when this the first thing started, mm -hmm. Missouri and and, and uh, Texas A and M are too far out. Yeah, but well, Missouri has the Kansas City market. That's that's you have the Kansas City market. That's yeah. a that's a major market out there. And then you look at uh, Texas A and M. That's a Texas market. Austin, Dallas, 
you know, San Antonio, you know, I have niece lives out in San Antonio. She's mm -hmm. a road runner fan. She's a Texas San Antonio road runner fan. I don't, I didn't rub it in on her because <laughs> she is my niece. But, uh, but you know, you, you look at this way. You you look at, uh, I think so. What do you do? You know, it's like the SEC. Would you go? Would you? Would you get if? You, would you get Southern Cal or UCLA if you had the chance? No. No. Because no. that's that's going too far. You have Arizona, Arizona State. Would you beat them? No. No. Or Utah or Colorado? No. No. That's of course, then again, you, if you go even further north in North Carolina, you've got uh, you got Virginia, Virginia Tech. Right. That Virginia so. Tech would be a great opponent for Tennessee yeah. because really that's because. Remember in, in Bristol when they had that game there, mm -hmm. that was equidistant. Yeah. So that that was perfect for what you needed. I was there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, from the stand, from the stands, looking at a football field, the players look like ants. Yeah. Well, well you know, it's because the, it was, course, it's, you you don't realize how I mean you, you think about as far as the racetracks are concerned, mm -hmm. Bristol is very small, very short track. Uh -huh. But when you think of that whole whole place uh -huh. in regards to how small a football field mm -hmm. is I mean it, it's just like a drop in a bucket I mean you it's hard to it's hard to see but uh, were you that, weren't you that guy jumping up and down and you know you know, caught him on TV you like this guy was Joe I said that looks familiar I can't tell who no, it is no I, I wouldn't do any jumping I was wearing orange though so yeah, was well, only, yeah well there's you know, about like, several uh, hundred thousand like a couple hundred thousand orange uh, People wearing orange. Well, there are some facts on that. You know, when they when they had when they proposed the battle at Bristol, okay, they had they had played some pro football exhibition games in the '60s when it was like 16,000 fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what it is, this is what they had to do. Well, of course, the schools weren't too hot on that idea at first, and they said no, and then they everybody started buying into this whole thing. So when they finished it up, first of all, they had to, they had to strip everything on the infield of all the equipment, everything. Mm -hmm. Then they had. They had to pour 50 tons of gravel, spread it out evenly. Then they put a foam pads over it, and then they put the artificial turf over it, and they put the, you know, everything that you had in a fo football yeah. football stadium. And they had to put this huge scoreboard right over the field and that sort of thing. Right. And they had to put in dressing rooms and all that. Now, 160,000 fans. You know, you knew it was going to be a sellout. It, it, no doubt about it. I think it sold out inside of 48 hours to, on the Tennessee side. I don't know about Virginia Tech side. Well, that Virginia Tech side was pretty empty about the third quarter. So <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, but the thing was is that you you, you had that crowd, and they're talking about doing it again. Texas was Texas Raceway was talking about having a game, mm -hmm. say between Texas and Texas A&M. But I don't think anything ever came of that. And the week after that game that they had there. They had another game mm -hmm. between Western Carolina and I think it was Furman or something like that. They only had 30,000 fans there, so it, it tells you what it is. Yeah. I don't think you could repeat that very often. No, no. But they, when they initially talked about it, they wanted it to be an annual event, but I mean, it's just... Uh, it's expensive. Yeah, it, it's expensive to put that together. It's, it's, uh, how much did the tickets cost? How, how much did you get took from the tickets? I don't remember. I've slept since then. <laughs> Luckily, we had an inside source that mm -hmm. uh, friend of a friend that, that could get good good prices, and they get uh, when these things come open, we get she's able to get get tickets before uh -huh. you know they go out. So uh, being alumnus and everything, so that's it's, that's a that's a plus. But yeah, it was definitely a fun time. I mean, had to walk from Arkansas. Of course, the the parking up there is <laughs> is. There's a wealth of parking, but the problem is it's far away, yep. and so you you really gotta if you if you plan to go uh, to a game like that, you better bring a golf cart with yeah, you or ab a, a hover round or something or a hoverboard or whatever. But uh, absolutely, absolutely. But you know the thing about let's let's go back to Tennessee Alabama. We know of course Saturday was two halves. Tennessee controlled the first half. Alabama controlled the second. What went wrong for Tennessee in that second half? Man, they stopped attacking. That's what I can understand, and from what I was seeing, they were coming out in the first half, first quarter, just I mean, throwing the ball over the field, spreading it around, just attack, 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 and then, seemingly half of the, through, the, through the third quarter, we just stopped, and then I mean, the second quarter, we just stopped, and then come the halftime, and it wasn't the same Tennessee team. It's like they it's like they changed mm -hmm. personnel, 
when they came out because they were not playing up to the caliber in the second half and they were, they were playing in the first half. Well, you know, of course, you know, Tennessee Alabama is, is notable for many games like that. You look at uh, you, you look at uh, 1966, uh, Tennessee jumped out to a 10-0 lead against Alabama mm -hmm. and they, they led them and, and Bear Bryant made the judgment, came down there, uh, you know, scored, got ahead, and then Tennessee got down there, kicked, tried to kick, kick a field goal to win it, and, and he went wide right. You know, Tennessee fan, players will tell you it went through the center. They felt they felt the referee needed glasses. And then, of course, in '68, Alabama drove down the field. They needed a field goal to win. They got they got the their kick blocked, and Tennessee mm -hmm. won that game. And of course, '79, Tennessee led 17-7 at halftime. And we're just it just was one tip of the ball away from putting out a big enough lead to where Bowen couldn't come back. Bowen comes back, wins 27-17. And then of course a few years back, Tennessee twice got uh, kicks blocked that they kept mm -hmm. him from winning the game. So you know it's this sort of thing. Remember it was that it's like Bear Bryant said. He said you're not you don't know what it's like to play football until you go up against against Tennessee. You know that's one thing that's always such a bad taste in our mouth. Not the fact that it's losing to Alabama. But the fact of when, in 2017, when we played down there, and Kiffin being the coach, mm -hmm. and... 2009. 2009, when Kiffin was the coach. Mm -hmm. And we got that kick blocked. Yeah. And Cody, Terrence Cody, that big defensive lineman, took his helmet off and was running around the field. That's a personal foul. Yeah, well... That's automatic first down. Yeah. Nobody did anything. Nobody said a word. And I'm like, what are you doing? When you're like Squatchy County, you know, when they ran ran into when they uh, hammered Harvey Keith, should have gotten mm -hmm. the shouldn't gotten should have gotten the penalty, should have yep. gotten the first down. But you know that's that's the way it is. But you know the thing about it is is that you know there are a lot of things about football games. You know referees sometimes see it, sometimes they don't see it, and uh, it, it happens. You know, it, you know the uh, course Tennessee player punching the Alabama players out. He lucky he didn't get a penalty out of that. That was that tells you. You know that you have to. You, that there are certain things. I, of course, let's talk again. Let's talk about Michigan. Michigan is in deep trouble. Apparently, they've they've been they've been accused of sign stealing. Now, at first, I didn't know what they meant. Sign stealing. Well, they go out and stole uh, signs off the Ohio State uh, uh, football field. No, what they did is they sent a guy up there in the stands who basically read what the what the opposition was doing. And that's illegal because since 1994, you can't send scouts in to scout an opponent. Right. Uh, ahead of you, they can't do that anymore. Apparently, they did that. Apparently, they also got tickets outside the Michigan campus to go see those games. Including, my had a couple of SEC teams like Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, where they got that idea from, but I guess it's you know it, it the way it is. But apparently, the uh, the head coach is not coaching this week because he is ill. But I think maybe there may be some situations may he may well be on his way out. Yeah, hard well, uh, it, it, it's very possible. I mean, he has returned that program to this rightful prestige. Mm -hmm. I mean, for those who are fans of the Wolverines, but yeah, you got to do it right. I mean, if you get caught, it's like Jeremy Pruitt. I mean, he wasn't the best coach in the world, and I wouldn't faith. I wouldn't uh, say he would be the the savior of the Vols, mm -hmm. but. I think we've done a lot better if he'd done it right. Yeah, he would. He wanted to catch up on on, on the Alabama and Floridas and all mm -hmm. that sort of thing, and he cheated and he got caught, and Tennessee paid a price for that. And of course, uh, of course, there's talk at South Carolina about possibly uh, getting a new head coach because the way the Alabama, Florida, South Carolina team not not doing what it should be doing, and uh, that's uh, losing more games and winning. Well, Shane Beamer is a good coach. I mean, he's. He comes from good stock. You remember Frank Beamer, who yeah. was legendary coach for Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was he comes from good stock. He knows how to play the game. And he knows how to work the, around. But I think he uh, again Shane Beamer is a good coach. But I think he got he he went too big too quick. He went too much too soon. Yeah, I, I think and he I, went from you know he didn't work his way up the way he sh I feel like he should have. But uh, you know it happens. I mean. I, I never thought Butch Jones was a head coach either. He's much better than his assistant, but uh, but he may be he may be on the verge of being fired. Uh, you're he probably is right. right. Probably yeah, about that because he really is it. And of course, Shane Beamer, uh, of course, uh, blew some games that he should have won. Florida, I mean, that last minute touchdown that won it for the Gators, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you look at this. You look at, of course, this weekend Tennessee is uh, at Lexington to play Kentucky. 
the Wildcats, of course, um, have a couple of losses, and uh, of course, uh, they have, they if they if they have one big problem in life, they have a problem of beating Tennessee. In, in 40 years, they've only won four times. Vanderbilt's beaten Tennessee more than that. You had to go and say that, didn't you? Yeah, because the reason is... With a big game coming up, see, you know, any sports fan knows, and those of you who are watching or maybe even listening, any sports fan knows, you don't bring up a stat like that. Because the second you do, something bad happens. It's well, like when someone out there says, like if you're, if you're playing baseball, mm -hmm. you say, well, this, this pitcher has not given up, given up a home run in the last 80 at-bats. <laughs> yeah. And you say that, next pitch, over the fence, home run. What? You know, you know, and, and again, at football, you say, well, he's not thrown an interception <laughs> in the past 120 attempts. Next, like, next pass, interception. And I'm thinking, you don't. There's a little thing that we call jinx. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I mentioned I mentioned that Tennessee did not turn the ball over during the Polk County game, and it didn't happen. Tennessee didn't play Polk. Bledsoe County. County played Polk County, and, and and I mentioned it, and you people went crazy in that press box. Tennessee, Tennessee you, didn't turn the ball over. Uh, well, County. whatever. And and what happened was is that. <laughs> Bledsoe did not turn the ball over, and you know it. And it's yeah, but you don't, but you let's, just don't let's, say that. But you have to look at the facts here. You look at the facts here. Tennessee, Kentucky beat, beat Tennessee in 1984, 2011. Okay, and then a few years after that, they beat him, and then beat him again. Four times, 40 years. Now, what does that tell you about what Kentucky... You know, you know Kentucky has great players. You know, they sometimes have better players in Tennessee, but somehow they remember a couple of years ago at Lexington how they got into a into a scoring suck fest. Tennessee scores first, and then Kentucky takes it down the field, and they had more time on the field than Tennessee had. Yeah, and and Tennessee still won because Tennessee wore them out. Well, it's always been a big rivalry. I mean, even though our main rivals, we you know, when you think about a rivalry, Tennessee, you think Alabama, mm -hmm. number one, and you think about in-state rivalry, Vanderbilt, you think about Georgia, you think about Florida. But Kentucky's always been up there at the top. I mean, we most Tennessee fans just, for lack of better words, can't stand Kentucky. Yeah. Well, you look at you look at Jerry Donato, Junior Donato, when he was head coach at Vanderbilt, he complained that Tennessee Vanderbilt wasn't even a rivalry anymore because in Tennessee would Vanderbilt would never beat Tennessee, and he hated Tennessee. He he would never call Tennessee by its name. He referred to that East Stadium at that school at the east end of the state. He threw people out because they wore a hat of orange raincoat on. And what happens first year? Tennessee hammers them. Mm -hmm. Just beats them like a rug. I mean, and through <laughs> four years, he only got one close game. In four years, Tennessee just absolutely just dominated Denardo. Uh, you know, you've heard the, the phrase, Denardo. That sort of was one of the, one well, of the fun little names. That ten tennis, Vanderbilt's had a lot of, of success against Tennessee. Um in the last few years, mm -hmm. so it's going to be that the game's not going to be a pushover. I'll be there, hopefully, no. Lord willing, in the stands for that game, and I hope that uh, Tennessee lays the wood to them again. Oh, absolutely, and of course, uh, that will be a six Kentucky game will be a six p.m. start on the Vol Network on ESPN, and then next week uh, against the University of Connecticut will be the Volunteer will be uh, will be an eleven a.m. kickoff. That'll be on the SEC Network as well. When we come back, we will have baseball, and then we'll wrap this thing up, wrap this little uh, confab up here. Uh, here, as you listen, as you're watching the uh, Mike and Billy Sports Scene Show here on Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative Channel 18. Billy. <laughs> Billy. My name's Bradley. Well, I don't know what your name. I could care less. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> I'm old. What can I say? But we'll be back in just one minute. <laughs> You're gonna get me in trouble, you know that. At Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter, we're committed to be better. Better prices, better vehicles, a better experience. Your Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter understands that you rely on us to provide you with the highest quality of used vehicles. With over 350 pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. So what are you waiting for? Let us show you a better experience with the Jason Lewis Automotive family. Come visit us at Rankin Avenue here in Dunlap or on the web at DunlapSuperCenter.com. Come and see the beautiful Sequatchie Valley. While you're here, visit the Dunlap Mercantile. We have a full line of hats from Resistol, Stetson, Charlie One Horse, American Hat Makers, 
Gigi Pip, Greeley hats from the TV show Yellowstone, and a full line of vintage hats. Make sure to check out our hat bar where we can clean, shape, and customize a hat just for you, right here at the Dunlap Mercantile. You need a bank that you can depend on. Here at Citizens Truck County Bank, we have the most dependable staff that you will ever meet. Call in, you will not get an automated attendant, you'll get a person. But on the other side, we have all the technology that anyone would need from apps to online banking to bill pay. So please come and grow with us as we're about to celebrate our 50th year. We are the only community bank you will ever need. Okay, we're back for our final segment. Of course, it's baseball, and uh, I have Bradley Hargis here. Why'd you call yourself Billy? Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the base Major League Baseball playoffs. And of course, uh, for the uh, Braves, sorry, sorry, Bradley, uh, they lost in the uh, division series to the Phillies, and uh, well, and um, your best four teams in major leagues mm -hmm. did not make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The only number, the only, the only number two seed, or really the only team that had a bye first round, uh -huh. made it to the ALCS, and that was that was Houston, and then Texas beat them. Um, the Phillies did beat the Braves three to one, uh -huh. right, three games to one, and then the Phillies lose to the Diamondbacks mm -hmm. four games to three. Yeah. So the once the Braves went out, the two teams that I've been cheering for have been the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. So. It's a, it's a win for me. Absolutely. So I'm hoping, I won't say who I'm for to win the series, but I hope it goes seven games, and I hope it's a really good a really good series. But yeah, the Braves Orioles were the best two teams in in the in the league all year long. They get to the playoffs, choke, which is why most Braves fans and other folks uh, they're not Braves fans say it's because of the Braves we call it instead of October we call it Choketober Choketober because we do good in the season win the division and then choke uh, in the playoffs but that's the nature of the beast and the vast majority of our team the core of our team will still be there next year um, I hope that in the off season we look at some pitching and uh, we're probably going to be needing another outfielder uh, Rosario is going to be a free agent he's probably going to be gone and uh, Pilar, the one we had this year, um, he'll probably be gone. Um, so they're going to have to find somebody to, to fill that spot. Um, they just signed Arcia to an extension. I uh -huh. mean, they've got Spencer Strider, Max mm -hmm. Free to be in a, a free agent in, in, in the next year. So, the, the, but the core of the team, Riley, Cunha, Albies, Arcia, um, Harris, Olsen, Murphy, they are all signed for, you know, several years. So we're going to be okay with those positions. But pitching is going to be our, our big deal. But, yeah, the Phillies come in, smacked us in the face. And uh, I, I said after that first, when the Braves won, that was winning that, going to win that one game, the reason they won is because I said, I'm going to start cheering for the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> because every team that I seem to cheer for, see, look, you jinxed them. Every team that I seem to cheer for it loses. So I cheered for the Phillies. <laughs> Braves beat them. Oh Lord! Wait, and I tried to, it. I, to the and excuse. I tried it again. Didn't kisses, work. Kisses. It didn't work. Uh, the Phillies kept beating. But uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm glad to see Arizona. Arizona's got a lot of young guys down there too. So they've got a bright future as well. But it's going to be a good World Series. Texas and Arizona uh, will be will be a fine matchup. You know, I was uh, looking through the internet, and uh, there was a uh, Yankees fan bought the last car that Babe Ruth ever drove, a 1947 car. I forget the I forget the uh, I forget the make of it. He bought it for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it was a very beautiful looking car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was you know something that Babe the Babe would uh, would uh, 
would drive around in in four hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars a lot of money and he's mm -hmm. he's a big yankees fan and obviously uh, he, a picture of him inside yankee stadium with the car so well, obviously uh, the bay still lives on in the hearts and minds of yankees fans uh you know baseball of course um you know a lot of things of course uh they were talk they were talking about in one article about uh, attendance at baseball games has fallen off you're just not pulling them in football is starting to out outpace them a bit and so is uh, professional basketball starting to outpace them a little well, bit. TV has a lot to do with that I mean, yeah. in fact now that now that you can stream I mean even though you can get Major League Baseball Network which I I did there at one time mm -hmm. I, I got them MLB Network and then hoping to catch every Braves game they black out mm -hmm. They say, well, the Braves game is on blackout, but yet they'll play a New York Yankees game. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, for this area and this region, I'm thinking, hey, like, who cares about the Yankees? That's, that's, that's the way you, know, you, know, you used to do it with pro football games and, and college football games as well. They used to do blackouts until they realized that you know, yeah. people do that. You know, the thing about it is, is with, with TV and television revenue. You know, uh, I was reading somewhere, somewhere where uh, in the, the Pac-10, when it was the Pac-10, when it was the Pac-8, they allowed football to be broadcast in the 1950s. They lost fans. It's sitting in the stands. They didn't like that too much, and they said, "Well, you know, you know, we're, why, why bother with it?" And it wasn't until the 1960s when ABC started really doing a real professional job of doing college football that it it, st it, yeah. it started to bounce back on them. And of course, it didn't keep because it keep fans from going to games. Especially if they're the big games. Well, most people, if you're an ardent fan, you're going to go to the ball game anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's convenient to sit at home and you know, in the comfort of your own living room, you know, or lean back in your recliner, yeah. or, or, or lay down in the bed and turn the TV on, or sit there and look, watch it on your phone. I mean, you've got so many ways that you can watch and at these games now. So it just sometimes it doesn't make any sense to get up and. You know, and, and and fight traffic and, and fight the crowd. And you can say kill the ref all you want, and, and nobody would nobody right. will care right. that sort of thing. But you know, the thing about it is when you watch, you know, it used to be when I was growing up, you saw one, maybe one Tennessee or one or two Tennessee games on TV a year because the NCAA basically mandated so, and then uh, and then of course the course rule that hey look you can't do that so the each school can make a deal to do a game and, and that's where you start seeing the proliferation of uh, of college football games ESPN, TBS, uh, CBS, ABC. Uh, NBC I always noticed would never hardly show a fo college football game to save its life except the Rose Bowl. Except the Rose Bowl and, okay. um, and Notre Dame. Notre, yeah I started to say they've uh, pitched Notre Dame out there a few times because it's Notre Dame. You know the thing about it was with Notre Dame I think one of the reasons why Notre Dame won't join a conference formally is because they would have to give up the contract with NBC. That's you know you know that's that, you know you know that's that's the way it is. Well, there are other reasons why Notre Dame won't join a conference, yeah. but we'll just. Well, of course, in the 1920s, Notre Dame actually did try to join the Big Ten. Guess who voted against them? Michigan and Michigan and Ohio State. Well, sure. And they could, they didn't want them in the Big Ten at the time. Now the Big Ten wants them, but they said several years, except in 2020 when they signed an agreement to, to join the ACC, you know, so they can play in a bowl game mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But you know, you look at it this way. You know, you look at the attendance. You look at you look at look at. I used to remember a few years ago when we were we were you know we were thinking going live of radio broadcast. Mm -hmm. How some people didn't want us doing it because they said, "Oh, we will take away the crowds from the games." Didn't happen. No, no, it didn't happen. Now those who are going to come to the ball game are going to go anyway. Yeah, but you know, really, in all honesty, I mean, those people who are, you know, not able to go to the game that would like to be a part of it, and those who are maybe sick and can't go to the game, mm -hmm. or maybe out of town, or yeah. or something. I mean, that's really what radio and TV was designed for was for those to be able to still be able to see the game and be a part of it but not necessarily be able to be there so yeah you look at you look at the ball network now you know initially when it was devised it was supposed to be the volunteer network Neilan said no the ball network because everybody the balls is the balls and mm -hmm. it's the largest network in the SEC right now yeah because they they have more stations that cover their games John Ward and Bill Anderson caused that to to explode right so we'll listen to it and that sort of thing and you know 
it's just like you know it's you know it's just like like you know on radio you know people listen to it you know people like me to always listen to the radio broadcast on friday night when the game's over they know that they're going to get a crowd right so so you know that's the that's the that, that so they know that uh that they're doing this and it, it's just a you know it's just a big thing and again like i said uh we got a big game friday night here oneida the indians of uh the the other big orange Mm -hmm. Comes down and plays the the uh, blue. And we're going to see. Warrior. We're going to see. And I'll be the first to tell you that I was wrong if I'm wrong. But you. <laughs> but the, the the comment was made last week that Oneida does not have the spear on their helmet. They have a O on their helmet. That's right. So we're going to find out Friday night. Mike said there was an O. Everyone knows. Mike said there was an O. I said it was a spear. Quite frankly. I don't care but at this point now you know it's just going to be fun to see who is wrong and if i was wrong i'll be the first to tell you and and i'm sure mike will be the second third and fourth to tell you that i was wrong uh, so <laughs> it, it's going to be okay everything's going to be fine but we're going to figure this out listen to the radio broadcast friday night and and that's where it's going to start and then next time we do this segment i want to come back again and i'm going to you guys remember that Mike said it was an O. I said it was a spear. Now, what's really going to be a like a what's really going to be a, a catch in this is if it's an O with a spear through it. Yeah. So we're we you know we both can't be right. So somebody somebody's got to be wrong. <laughs> None. You know no, that's, no, just, no. that's just the the, the no, whole no, no, premise no. That, that we have here. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Mike, it, it you. it's you. You're gonna be wrong because I think they got a spear on their helmet. I want to see those envelopes that you said that I that I lost on every bet. I want to see it in writing. We didn't bet anything. Uh, we I want to make... see this in writing. I want to see this in writing because I'm going to tell you something right now. I could bet money that I was right on half, more than half of it. Well, you'd lose because we every year we would take the schedule and we would predict the scores for all of those. At the end of the season, whoever got the most right didn't really win anything except bragging rights. Mm -hmm. And I was so, I felt so bad because I was getting them oh, right here, here so much that I just didn't want to bring them out and, and, and you know, hurt your feelings. So I just, no. left them, I just left them be. I'm not, I'm not worried about them. You know, I don't want, I don't need, I don't need to come in and say, hey, Mike, look, you know, you, you were right. I never see a, you're, you're a you know, preacher I, and you're, you're sitting there and you're, you're feeding them a line. No, I, no. You gotta run for I, political I, I, office. I, 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 I swear. I, I tried that. You gotta run work. for political office. I swear, you laying it on thick. I didn't bring my boots with me. So I'm just saying, deep. I mean. I know it, you get piled that high. I mean, it's, it's like that old song. It's, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way, you Mike. Trust I mean, me, I, you trust me, you ain't perfect. I am. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, let Bledsoe County Friday night. We will have the game between Bledsoe County all night. It'll be senior night and also the 62, 72, and 83 Sequatchie Valley Conference champions will be honored for their achievements over the years as Bledsoe County, of course, will take on all night. And this is very important now. We, we, we do not state this enough. The winner is second in the league. The loser is third. We'll go on the road. Now, we want to win because we're going to go up against a 1-1-18. One, one, one that's up from Upper East Tennessee, and that's the last thing in the world that Bledsoe County fans really want to do is drive out that far, even though I know they will. Uh, really, of course, this should be an interesting game. Uh, of course, the game, of course, will be... Uh, will basically decide who's going to be second right now york is first even if they lose to polk county they're still going to be first mm -hmm. so uh right now it's bledsoe it's york it's oneida it's polk county they are in the playoffs as for wartburg and teleco plains they are out they're, they're basically they uh they're basically uh do not meet the number required uh, uh, wins to get, to get into the playoffs, and of course uh, Bledsoe County will of course try to uh, get a win Friday night and and win eight games for the first time since two th since 2020 in a season. So uh, Bledsoe County, of course, will be facing off against Oneida, the Indians, the other Big Orange versus the Big Blue at James C. Ward Field. We want the fans to pack the stands to cheer on the Warriors on the victory. As uh, basically, we're going to Bledsoe will try to show uh, the fans a treat. And give Oneida a few tricks here and there as they go through I'm their version go out, of I'm going to go out on a, on a limb here, and I'm going and I'm going to go ahead. And, and I'm going to be sawing on that limb. I'm going to go ahead and challenge the people of this community. Mm -hmm. Let's make Friday night, at least on the Bledsoe side, 
look like a Sequatchie County hunt game. Let's all get out there in full force, wearing your blue. Let's get out there and support our Warriors because you know how encouraging that is when you go out on that field and you look up and you see a stadium full of fans. Mm -hmm. That is very encouraging to you to know that these people came out to support you and in turn you want to give it back to them. Cool. So get out there, support that. If you're into big games this weekend, you got to come to Bledsoe on Ida. That's going to be a big game. If you're into baseball, big game. World Series starts Friday with Texas and Arizona. Uh -huh. If you're into big games for college, you got Tennessee, Kentucky that are playing. You've got Georgia, Florida that's playing. Yeah, and you also have Oregon playing Utah. That's going to be a pretty that's good matchup pretty game. Uh, out there to, on, in, on the western side of the country too. So if you're looking for big games, tune into one of those. But don't tune into Bledsoe County's game. Come to it. Come to it. Come to Bledsoe County's you game. Can bring, you can bring you can bring in headsets. And listen to us doing and the tell broadcast. them tell them at the gate that Mike sent you and Bradley sent you. You don't get anything any special treatment, but just tell them, just to kind of see the look on their face and what they're, you know, what they what what's that mean? What's that mean? Okay. And just you know, play a joke on them. I but also the, would like you to uh, the for the quarterback club. They have a uh, they have a vendors stand where you can get T-shirts, uh, flags, whatever you need there. Mm -hmm. Uh, do some business with them, buy some t-shirts or whatever. Good Christmas gifts, maybe. Uh, you can send to Squatchy County fans if, if you really have relatives who are for Squatchy County. You can send them one just to, just, to, just, to, just to prank them a bit. But again, as, as I said, Friday night, there'll be a game between Bledsoe County and Oneida. Again, hopefully we won't have the fog coming down on it like we did three weeks ago against Polk County where we didn't get to see the fans, but we knew they were there, of course. But, of course, uh, Bledsoe County, of course, trying to go to win, go to six straight wins in the, in the season and trying to go eight and two and finish second in Region 2-2A. Two, so, again, we encourage you. We, we beg you. Please show up for that game. Show up in force. Wear your blue. Wear your gold. Show everything you have to the Oneida fans. And let's just let's because Oneida is going to bring its fans, and they're probably going to pack their their end of the stadium. So let's see who's going to win big in the in the attendance column. Let's Friday rephrase night. that and show your warrior pride. Oh well, yes, yeah, so let's show that to them. Let's show that uh, Friday night. And remember, be a be a sportsman of chip about it. And basically, is that you know, that's what it is all about sportsmanship. But be kind, win or lose, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow, and it will happen. I don't know. I don't some know. people it might not. You, you know. know. Well, you know, but you know, some of us will be asleep when the sun comes up uh, Saturday morning, of course. But anyway, Bledsoe Oneida. That will be six thirty. Will be the pregame activities to honor the uh, seniors and the 62, 72, and eighty three Squatchy Valley Conference teams. We want you to be there to to uh, say goodbye to the seniors as they will hopefully try to deliver a victory. Uh, Friday night against Oneida. Brad, you some final words before we uh, go off for a, for a two-week siesta? I think we pretty much said it all, but again, as Mike was, I want to reiterate myself, support the Blue. Get out there and, and cheer the Warriors on Friday night. It's huge. This is huge for them. And, you know, I, I'm starting to think it mean, it might mean more to me than it does anybody else, but I, I, I'm, I really want to see Bledsoe County beat Oneida, um, probably because of the last two times that are the two times that we played and we lost mm -hmm. by one point mm -hmm. each time yeah um so it's it's just it's just a big deal for for me personally and i know it is for the players and and those who are involved in the coaching staff now so get up there and support those blue uh blue uh warriors on on friday night but as always i'll i'll, I'll sign off with with my tagline go blue go braves unfortunately they're not going anywhere now uh -huh. and go big orange and of course, uh, again, Friday night, 7 o'clock, the game will kick off at James T. Warden Field, 6.30 pregame activities for the senior class and the, uh, again, the 62, 72, and 83 uh, SVC teams. Again, we'll have this on WAT AM 10 if you can't make the ball game. Uh, live broadcast on WAT with me and Bradley. So we bid you farewell. We'll see you in two weeks as you're, li as you're watching the uh, Mike and Bradley Sports scene here on Bledsoe Telephone Channel 18. Good day, everybody.